Welcome to the Spiritual Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Beth, founder of Day One Life Coaching. And the Spiritual Transformation Podcast is an extension of my practice, really. I'm a spiritual and trans- transformational life coach. And actually, today, I have on Ari Honeyford. Did I say your name right, Ari? You sure did. Perfect. And she's also a spiritual life coach. And I'm going to read her short bio to you real quick. And you're you're not going to want to miss this episode. You're going to love Ari. So meet Ari Honeyford. She's a booming businesswoman turned mystic matron. From the boardroom to the realm of tarot readings and psychic insights, Ari's journey has been one of transformation and learning to celebrate the awesomely awkward and wildly weird. My kind of person. (laughs) Embracing her intuition, Ari now empowers others through spiritual coaching and nurtures Awkwardly Zen, a global community of over 16,000 souls. Wow. Fostering connection and growth worldwide. And I'm actually a member of that community now, thanks to you. (laughs) I was like, when you told me about it in our little pre-podcast chat, I was like, help me find it. Absolutely. Community is important. It is. So I guess the first thing I want to talk about is Let's just talk a little bit about your personal journey, you know, like your spiritual transformation. We've all, because if you were a businesswoman to what you're doing now, I know you probably like me, because same here, I was in corporate. Uh, we, In order to get to where we are, there's typically like some sort of dark night of the soul type situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you have anything like that, Ari? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Um, I I often say in my coaching and also in the community that from my darkest moments have come my brightest joys, right? And uh, it's allowed me to accept the dark things a little bit more that way, because I can walk from my absolute darkest moment to starting awkwardly Zen, to stepping into my own authenticity, to feeling more comfortable in my own skin, all of that. So um, I lost someone very, very dear to me. And, um, I, I was navigating the grief in what I thought was a healthy way. Uh, little did I know then that almost everything I was doing was not healthy, but Mm -hmm. I'd pushed it down. Uh, and then it started crawling back up and I, uh, I knew I needed some help with that. And so I did, um, all sorts of things, physical exercise, therapy, all sorts of things. And I'm a big fan of therapy. Uh, however, what really seemed to help me the most was essential oils. And so I started using essential oils and that opened my eyes to um, things that maybe I wasn't paying attention to. And that took me to the chakras and then that took me to psychics and then that took me to mediums. And, uh, and the next thing you know, I was channeling and I was starting to get messages and they, the messages kept coming through from readings I was getting and also my own personal messages while I was in meditation and, and, and driving down the road. Um, Don't do that unless you know for sure. I was driving down I-70 in Kansas and anyone who knows that knows that you just go. Uh, Anyway, the the messages came in that I was supposed to start this big community and this do this big thing. And uh, I fought it for a while, but I'm so glad um, that my guides and source, uh, God, whatever you want to call it, was very um, helpful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Adam, it's a, maybe a better word, even though forceful makes them laugh. Uh, and, and I eventually did follow what I was being guided to do. And here we are almost four years later. And I can't even imagine what my life would be at with, like without it. And I love that because that's how it is. Like one thing leads you to another like that. It starts small. And I think um, Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay were my first, like I was just kind mm-hmm. of, I was really young you know, my early teens and uh, Wayne Dyer was on like a PBS station and it just caught his voice. I was, I, didn't, I don't even, we never even watched PBS. Like I swear right. was, my, my guide set this up. I, I wasn't watching PBS as a teenager and there's Wayne Dyer, you know, and, and I just was captivated and I ended up, it was hours and hours long of his, him giving lectures. And that's what got me into this like really pulled in, you know, I just loved him and followed him ever since. And, and then he led me to Louise Hay. And then, you know, that's, and then Abraham Hicks and then Abraham Hicks was one of my first ones for sure. Yeah. And it snowballs. So that's Mm -hmm. great. I love that. So can I ask you like when you lost somebody that you love? And I I know we talked, I know the story. Um, What were the, just so our audience knows, what were some of the unhealthy things that you were talking about that made you suppress it? Because I think it's important for us to say, 
I mean, was it something like, uh, and I don't know this part, but I used to be the positive vibes only girl. And now we know, is, was it something like that where? Yeah, there was some of that more than anything. Um, I am a recovering chronic doer. Um, I am, I, I am coming out of the idea that hustle culture is a positive thing. Um, and so I kind of just threw myself into taking care of everybody else and, um, pushing down the emotions so that I could just get through it. And and unfortunately, I think like so many people, it is so easy in those moments to find yourself uh, ignoring the warning signs, the illnesses, the headaches, the all of those things, um, because I just got to I've got to power through. I've got to power through, especially those of us who are type A, right, where it's like, right, I will just force my way through this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so. It's, it was definitely a moment where I was pushing down all of my emotions because I was taking care of everyone else. I didn't take time to grieve um, and to allow those emotions out. That's a huge one for me. Um, I had a ton of anger uh, and underneath that anger was sadness and underneath that was more anger and underneath that was more sadness. And so uh, rage was a big part of bless my lovely husband um, that I would just lash out. Yeah. And that was so unhealthy, but it was all I could do at the moment. And, and really when I look back to that woman of six, five, six years ago, I have so much compassion for her uh, because she was doing the best she could in the moment. Right. And so right. I always say that with people who are going through something right now that, yeah, you might not be doing it right. Right. You might not be doing it in the way that you want to be doing it, but sometimes we just have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Uh, and if that means that you lash out, yeah, you want to go apologize, but try not to beat yourself up for that. And that was not something. So I would go through that cycle, rage, shame, sadness, rage, shame, sadness. And it's just, it was, it was a really toxic way to deal with those things. Um, but I didn't know it. Well, I'm glad I asked that question. You gave a lot of golden nuggets here because a lot of people, we don't know what we don't know, right? And that's why you have totally. compassion for the Aerie from six years ago is because yeah. you just didn't know. When we know better, we tend to do better. So right. hopefully. Right. Well, and that's what I always think is uh, I'm so grateful for the way this path has gone, even though it has not been easy. And there are moments that it feels um almost devastating is the word that comes to my mind, right? Where, where you want to turn around and say, never mind, I don't want to be enlightened. Um, but I'm so grateful for where I am now and who I am now. And I can only imagine what it'll be like in another six years. Well, that leads to my next question about embracing the change that all that comes with spiritual growth. Cause as we know, it's not exactly a bed of roses healing is you know very difficult and, and a lot of people do they're just like forget this i didn't know it was going to be this hard it sounds great in theory is yeah. it? <laughs> but actually doing the work so let's talk about that a little bit like what could you tell us about embracing uh the the changes that come with spiritual growth you know, lately, the way I've been embracing it is humor. And I laugh when you say the work, because that comes up a lot in the community. Um, and I also, it comes up a lot in my silly videos I make on Instagram, um, where I'm teasing about that, right? Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. there's so many people who are like, I don't know what the work is. Uh, and, and I feel that, right? I understand that, because I think the work can mean so many different things. That's true. Um, and for me, uh, the work was definitely one facing the parts of myself that I did have that shame about that I was not proud of that I, um, or sometimes I was overly proud, like I was wearing it as a badge of honor, right? I used to say, a, uh, I used to say that there's a fine line between being a a strong woman and being a bitch. And uh, I was, I was walking that line and jumping hardcore into the other side every once in a while. And, and what I had to learn was being that aggressive being, um, I mean, I would have said, Oh, I'll tear that person to shreds, or I'm going to manipulate this situation. And now I'm like, Oh, I don't want to do that. Um, for me, it was figuring out that I could just ask for what I want in my life. Right. I could, I could actually set those boundaries with myself included. However, that was painful. That was really tough. And it continues to be tough. I am by no means healed. As a matter of fact, when I hear that, when people are like, I'm healed, I'm always like, ooh, 
Let's see we, what happens we, in about You know, there's going to, I see it as we're going to be on our deathbeds and still have things that we haven't yeah. quite healed. But luckily we have a lot of incarnations to figure it all out. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm not coming back again. Uh, no, I, I feel like, I feel like for me, at least it's been this awareness that I don't have to be perfect. Um, and that's a hard one for me. And, yeah. you know, my, the volunteer team that helps with awkwardly Zen, they would tell you, they'll laugh when I say things like that. They're like, oh yeah, you, you're figuring that out. <laughs> um, I don't have to be perfect. And also when I am upset or when I am struggling, I don't have to love and light it immediately. Um, and I think that that's one of the biggest downfalls in spirituality to me is there are so many people out there who are like good vibes only. Um, and I'm all for good vibes. I think it's great. And I, I do think that that is a beautiful tool to use is to raise your frequency, to raise your vibration. But I don't feel like we're here to not experience the whole range of emotions. Right. And, we're spiritual and beings that. having yeah. a human experience. We can't forget to be human. And that's what they call spiritual bypassing, right? Absolutely. And, and absolutely. I was guilty of, like, I think I said that already. Like, I was the good vibes girl. And I, you know, but that's really what it really is, you guys watching, is denial. You know, you're, you're in denial Maybe. and you're suppressing your feelings and, and that never ends well. Never yeah, ends. Those yeah, feelings and, are still there. And I keep trying to say, because, you know, when you run a spiritual community, uh, I, I, we do four open conversations every week. And so I have experienced a lot of people in a lot of different parts of their path, which is so beautiful, right? When you're talking to someone who's been doing this for 50 years, and then you're talking to someone who's brand new and who has that wide-eyed look of terror um, <laughs> of what have I gotten myself into? Uh, it's such a beautiful thing to walk through with them, all of them. Yeah. And I do think that there are people on this planet who hit a level where they can stay almost always in that good vibration and mm -hmm. power to them. But I honestly, at this point, don't know if I want that right. um, because sometimes the drama and the excitement of getting through something and learning and growing and uh, it's just so beautiful to me now, um, yeah. sometimes not in it. But even today, I was telling you by Internet all of a sudden we get a notice saying, Hey, we don't have internet at the house and you might not for days. And I was like, all right, we're going to jump in the car, go find something. And that became an adventure instead of a nightmare. And I think that's the biggest change for me is, uh, the chariot card in the tarot deck is my favorite because mm. you could hold on and go for the ride. And I love that. I love the idea of, uh, getting on the chariot and just, letting that wind blow through your hair and staying as balanced as you can, knowing that you might fall off periodically, but you'll catch right. up on it. And I just, the idea of adventure instead of um, devastation is much more fun to me. <laughs> instead uh, of meltdown, like why yeah. you have the meltdown. However, <laughs> I still have those meltdowns, Mary Beth. I still do. Like there's, I, I'm not going to lie. My husband would call me out on it. So there are moments where I'm like, what am I doing? And, you know, I think we'll probably hit on imposter syndrome because everyone is right yeah, now. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, and, and that shoots up like, but this is, this is part of it, right? It's yeah. it's part of the adventure. And honestly, I truly feel like it makes us better coaches when we can understand what people are going through. Yeah, we don't we we we're more relatable, right? <laughs> but totally. The contrast like is part of creation. We don't create anything without the contrast. Or like Abraham would say, you don't know what you want until you have what you don't want. You have, you know, that's how it works. Yeah. And from what I've learned now, now that I'm a law of attraction teacher and I really understand it so much better than I used to is, mm. and that's why I wanted to teach it because I saw, oh man, so many mm. people are getting this wrong. There's so much misinformation about the law of attraction. So much. It, it's, <laughs> it's embarrassing. But um, that really the, the contrast will always be there. It's just that our relationship with the contrast, that's, that's what we change. So like yeah. I too can almost have a meltdown, but I am good at catching myself quickly and turning things around quickly. And it, and it is like after the fact, yeah. you are appreciative of that contrast. That's what changes. You're like, wow, I'm in such a better place because of all that, you know, the tornado hit or <laughs> whatever, you know, not right. little tornado, but um, <laughs> it might be. Yeah, um, it could be or an emotional yeah. tornado like and yeah. you know that I I do. I appreciate contrast now. And I it is kind of a fun adventure, like mm. you put it instead of 
and it can be, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I want to hold space for those people who are like, whatever ladies, <laughs> like my contrast is not fun right now. And that's true. That's true. Because sometimes it's not right. Like we have things that are, are human things coming, mm-hmm. right. We've got loved ones that we lose and we have health issues and we have all of that. And, uh, and I think for me, at least the biggest thing has been allowing myself to not be okay. Right. And then, then going, okay, now what's, what's the plan? Like, how, how do we get to, how do we get to deal with this? How do we get to make this the best we can for us without spiritually bypassing, without not yeah. actually working through those emotions that are coming up? I'm so glad you clarified that because for sure, it's totally different than, um, I guess I don't even know if I call that contrast. Like, cause like when my mom died, I definitely wasn't like, Oh, that was an adventure, you no, know, like, <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> it wasn't like that. You know, my most recently my soulmate cat died and I was so devastated and, but that, yeah, we let ourselves go through that all the, the grieving process. Um, I'm not catching myself in those kind of things. What I'm catching myself and turning things around quickly would be something like, you know, my electricity went out and then I'm totally. like, I would like in the past have a meltdown and, you know, totally. but I, but Absolutely. I work from home, you know, and I'd be like, oh, like, this is horrible. My whole day, right. Get, get a shower and go <laughs> leave the house. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that was the same thing with my internet going out that I was like, well, yeah okay, I guess that's a really great excuse to go do this podcast or video cast and then um, go out and enjoy the 70 degree weather. And so that's what I'm going to do after this is take the rest of the day off. And you know what? Everything can wait. Perfect. I like that. That's a great, that, that's a great perspective there. So let's talk a little bit about um, transitioning from being a businesswoman in the corporate world, I'm assuming, yeah. Um, to becoming woo woo. How did that fly with the, you know, the people that you knew and were you scared of what, you know, the judgment and the, the inevitable? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, absolutely. You know, it, it was a, it was a transition. It was not an immediate thing. Um, and, and so I, I always like to say to people who are going through that, like, give yourself grace to not be ready to share with everyone. And also I like to remember, and I had to remind myself of this while I was going through it that I don't like it when someone shoves their beliefs on me. So I don't want to shove my beliefs on somebody else, right? I, I would love to share if they want to hear it, but um, but I don't want to do that. And I did. At the beginning, if I had someone who I thought would like it, I'd be like, yeah. all on them, right? Like, here's every bit of information. Guilty. And they were like, hey, yeah, well, because we're excited. Yeah, right? you're passionate. <laughs> And that has also helped me with my compassion for people who believe in other things, who have other religious beliefs and things like that is they're excited. They want to share mm-hmm. what they love. And I, I think that's beautiful no matter yeah, what, that right? True. Uh, mostly no matter what. Um, <laughs> but for me, what I found, I was a, a fundraiser for uh, nonprofits. I've known, I own still a nonprofit consulting um, company and I worked a lot in rural America and a lot with farmers and in these tiny, tiny towns, like 1200 people, 1500 wow. people. And so I had this idea that my spiritual and my, my muggle job, my work job could not cross. So I started awkwardly Zen and that was like my world here. And then I also had my fundraising world here and I really didn't think they could cross over. And then the universe gave me an awesome person in one of my projects who introduced me to Abraham Hicks, who we had this beautiful conversation the first time we met. And all of a sudden it didn't feel so scary anymore because I didn't have to tell everyone everything, right? I'm not going to go running into the middle of these tiny towns that are very much a different belief system than me and say, fairies and dragons and Sasquatch and all of the things. I mean, I might, if that comes up, but more than that, it's like, I'm working on mindfulness and I'm, I'm experiencing my spirituality and I'd wear my crystal, right? My crystal is my favorite thing to do in, in areas where I'm not quite sure how I'll be taken mm-hmm. um, because we find each other, right? Like if there'll be someone and they'll go, Ooh, I really like your crystal. Is that selenite? And I'm like, Oh, you're one of us. Yeah. Uh, and then we can talk about it. Like but... a smoke signal that you wear. Totally. And so just, just doing those little things allowed me to kind of baby step out of what it was that I believe, which was completely incorrect. So that's the one thing I'll say. If you are out there in corporate America and you think you cannot be spiritual, 
please stop telling yourself that. Um, if people can be in corporate America and be Christian uh, or Hindu or Muslim or anything else, then we are allowed to have our, our beliefs. And when we make it weird, it's weird for other people. True. Right. We we have to be the ones who normalize this. It's like I said to you, I walk into this coffee shop and the girls sitting right outside this room are talking about a psychic development class. And openly I could hear them as I'm walking by. And I was like, yeah, there we go. Um, and that's just it. The more and more and more we do this. I think they just heard me. Uh, the more and more and more we do this, the more we find that other people take it seriously, that they they make it normal. When someone asks me what I do for a living. I say, I run a spiritual community and I'm a psychic. And it is so fun to me to watch their reactions yeah. because some people are like, oh my gosh, tell me everything. And I'll say a majority of the people are like that, right? Yeah. Uh, there's every once in a while, someone who will go, oh, and then they find a reason to get away from me. But I don't mind that. That's okay. They don't have to like me. They don't have to like what I'm doing, but I get to say who I am and what I am. Yeah. That's my, my joy. And in those, I wish I would have done it sooner. It wasn't on my path. Um, I, it was one of those things I had to learn in my own time and in my own way, but it is such a beautiful thing now to stand in who I am and what I am and to watch how the universe goes. Okay, cool. You're taking ownership. Let's give you this. Here's Let's more. give you this. Oh, Here's you more. want new friends who support you? Here you go. Here's a whole bunch of them. And it's like, why did I ever not do this? Yeah. But I can clearly remember those moments of panic. I can clearly remember that idea of these people will hate me and I will not get business if they know what I believe. And, and that's so sad. And it is real. It is real. Like people need to keep themselves yeah. safe. Right. There are situations where if you say things, you might not be in a safe. So please be be smart, be logical, make those choices. Have some discernment of yeah. like, talk to. Yeah. Cause I think that's another thing in spirituality. We're like, scream it from the rooftops. Well, if you're in the rooftop in the middle of somewhere where somebody wants to actually hurt you, don't, yeah. please don't. Yeah. Um, but maybe ease it in a little bit more, maybe start with, with meditation or start with, with crystals or mention the phase of the moon, whatever, and see how many people, cause they will come out of the woodwork cause we are everywhere now, um, everywhere. And I tell you from running a worldwide community everywhere, it's yeah. always amazing to me how many people pop up from middle America and they all think the same thing. They're all like, Oh, I can't talk about it here. And I'm like, no, I think you can, because I also know this person and this person and this person from your exact area. Yeah. Um, so maybe try a little bit. And and I think the more we do that, the more we put ourselves out there and that we make it normal, the more normal it's going to get. Yeah. Um, and I was in corporate and um, I think I told you for five, at least five years, I wouldn't even do a video because I was afraid of those worlds colliding and the judgment, the inevitable judgment that would come along. And it was it's so liberating though. And, you know, I still have a side, my logistics is now my side business, you know, and I, so I, I don't work for corporate for a long time. I've been running it on my own. So I think that helped me though, to not have yeah. the fear. Cause like, who's going to fire me, you know, like <laughs> I'm self-employed. So that definitely was helpful, you know, yeah. um, to, to take away the fear. But yeah, I, I definitely remember that clearly of just being so concerned about what other people are going to think. And I'm so happy to be out of the spiritual closet. That's what I call it. We came out of the spiritual closet and it is what it is. And people can, that's really important what you said earlier, because not everybody has to like us. And that was such freedom and being like, not everybody needs to be my audience either. And yeah. then learning too, because I do have some, and I don't know why they hire me, but I do get some clients who hire me that aren't into spirituality and they'll still hire, because I mean, I help people with addictions and, and, and you know, like um, overeating and things like, because food addiction is <laughs> like, there's an addiction, like for almost every problem that we have. That's what Absolutely. I've learned. People are like, I don't have any addiction. Like what's your relationship right. addiction? Like there's really at the root cause of problems is an addiction. Let it, me uh, take could a be, sip of my coffee while yeah. we're talking about that. It could be overthinking or anything like that. I just quit coffee um, a little over a week ago. 
I was telling uh, Valerie, your friend Valerie, yes. and I, because I was, it, it was hard, but I'd been drinking coffee since I was so young and I had, a, it was awful for a few days there, like as bad as you think it was going to be. Yeah. But I'm good now. Now I feel, you're I, good. You're here. I feel good and I feel better. But yeah, that was my like last vice that I can really think of other than like my, my cell phone, you know, we've right. all, got, we've all got that one, you guys. Um, but anyway, yeah. So some certain people who would hire me and they wouldn't be into spirituality and it's like, almost impossible for me to talk these days without say like energy and law of attraction terms but i you can it's just not it's i think that i'm just going to vet those people out from now on because it really prevents a lot of tools that i use with people i can help you but let's face it that's how i got out of my addictions was so so i know it's powerful for, and i think yeah. I, I just do better with the more open minded clients Absolutely. And I think, you know, what's interesting is things like energy, it's becoming more widely science. known throughout, right? Yeah. Science <laughs> is talking about it. Quantum physics is talking about it. Um, there's so much more information about it. And that's one thing. The internet has its challenges, but it has also opened doors to these ideas. Uh, and I, I think that's one of the coolest things that we're seeing now is, is people from all walks of life and, and coming in. And some of them are more open-minded than others, but saying the word energy doesn't have the same woo-woo thing as it used to, right? It's like, oh yeah, energy. Of course I get energy, right? I get energy. I know if I walk into a room, if I like it or I don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I always do with those folks who may be a little bit more narrow in their scope is, okay, let's, let's find a middle ground here. Let's find something that we both can relate to, right? Do you believe in a higher power? Me too great. Do you believe in love and compassion? Like that's the big one, right? Like that's the ultimate goal for all of us. I think, I hope, um, is that we find more love and compassion. We want to feel better in our own bodies. We want to feel better around our friends and our family members. So let's focus on that. And that has helped me, but I also, most of the people I work with are going to be from the spiritual community because that's right. just the people I'm around. That's who um, you're going to, that's who we're going to attract. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and that, also with my family, my, my in-laws are very, um, very much in a different mindset than me. Oh. And they love me so much. Um, and once I flipped the switch from being irritated that they couldn't understand to being really in gratitude that they love me so much that they're worried for my soul, everything changed. And so I try to do that with anyone I run across is like, it, again, like you said, we only know what we know. Right. And if we're all getting different facts, which we are, if we're all getting different facts, um, then how can I be mad at somebody for having a belief system that True. I don't understand if I don't want them to be mad at me for having a belief system, they don't understand. Yeah. All we see all day, every day is our beliefs. That's all we can see. So yeah. um, you said earlier about explaining energy. I use that one, like walking to a room and you could feel the energy, like everyone gets that. And another one, everybody regarding being psychic, a lot of people will, they almost everyone's experienced when you think of someone and then they call or vice totally. versa. Yeah. Like yeah. everybody that happens to people all the time. Well, that's because, you know, we're electromagnetic beings and, you know, it really is scientific. And another thing that's happening that's really good for us is technology has improved so much that we're able to measure these things and prove things that used to be only theories in quantum physics. Now yeah. it's actually measurable and you could see energy. You could take pictures of auras. You could do, do all of these things that used to, we, we didn't used to be able to do. It used to just be woo woo. And now Absolutely. it's like, hey, this is science, literally, quite literally. Well, and science is getting more fantastical every day, which allows for people to think about things in a slightly different mm -hmm. way, right? Like when, like when you think about you and I are sitting in totally different places, having a clear video conversation with one another. I, I talk to thousands of people all over the world on a regular basis. It's wild. And right? yeah. And 20 years ago, we didn't have cell phones. Yeah. Right. Or we, we would have thought that sounds like, nah, that's, that's uh, science fiction. Yeah. <laughs> I guess 20 years ago, look at me aging myself. 30 years ago, we didn't have cell phones. 20 okay. years ago, I was getting my first. I just, phone. I just went along with it. I'm like, okay, I don't, I know. I don't, I don't still want to think like, I know. And time is weirder and weirder and weirder as it is too, which yeah. is another thing with those people who don't get it. Like the idea of time, not feeling 
normal anymore is something that most people can relate to. Yeah, it really is speeding up or <laughs> it's, it's, it's just weird. And we can, I, I feel like um, I do have like one foot in 5D all the time. I feel like I have learned how to kind of manipulate time, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you, well, that's a different, that's a totally different <laughs> podcast. We won't get into that one. Right. But, um, you mentioned earlier about uh, one thing leading to another, and then you kind of, and then you're like, and then I did this and I did this and I was channeling. So the, the name of this, um, so I want, I don't want to skip over that because right. the name of this episode is, so you want to be a psychic. So, yes. so was that natural? Like, mm. Because I don't think that's so that that wasn't the case for me, for instance. So I'm I'm assuming a lot of our viewers. Did you take any classes, or how did you just la -da 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 -da? jump into I, it? Yeah, yada, yada, yada. I'm channeling. So <laughs> that's kind of how it felt. But yes. Um. So here's the thing. I truly believe, and I teach psychic development. So I truly believe that everybody is a psychic. I do and too. Psychic is a really tough word for people. So intuitive. Um. Sometimes you know things, you don't know why you know it, all of those things. Um, and there's there's lots of different clairs out there. So there's like clear cognizance, which is clear knowing. And that's my strongest gift. That's mine uh, too. Right. And that's, I think it's probably a lot of people's. And that's part of why they don't think that they are psychic or they're intuitive is because a lot of us claircognizance just think we're really clever. Yeah. Um, like, so I don't know how I know. I just know. <laughs> I just know. I just know, right? It's people being drawn to us. Um, it's having the answers when you don't know why you have the answers. Sometimes it's being really good at your job, but you don't know why you're good at your job. You just all of a sudden are good at it. Um, and so for me, once I started learning about the clairs and learning about um, what they meant and how to feel them, I was like, holy cow, I've been channeling my job uh, my whole life. I've been channeling my job. I just thought I was really good at it, but no, it was coming through. And I channeling can mean a lot of things to different people, right? I do not get out of my body and let something take over my body and talk. That's not, that's trans channeling. And trans -channeling. for people who do it, that's not my, my thing. But I feel like anytime I am getting a message from something out Side of me that is channeling. Okay, downloads, I, downloads. Yeah. Okay, downloads. Cool. Exactly. So to me, that's channeling. So you do channel. I do channel. As, yeah, right. that's, that's how I created my deck of cards, my addiction recovery exactly. with the law of attraction cards. It, I was out. I was in the vortex. I was out walking my dog without. For one of the very few times, as you a type A know, my mind was not busy. Like I was totally. just chill. I was in receiving mode, and the whole idea just got downloaded. Yep. And I took action because I know that's what we need to do. And actually, that's going to lead to the next question that I was going to ask you about yeah. when you do receive these messages. Like, t let's talk a bit a little about that. Like, how do you what do we need to do? Like, totally. So for in a nutshell, that's a tough one. I mean, I could teach hours and hours of classes yeah. on that. But um, in a nutshell, to me, it's when you realize you are getting a message that is not you, whether that's chills in your body, whether that's a uh, image popping in, whether that's hearing something, whether that's just knowing something, whatever that is, sometimes it's even smelling or tasting like it's and crazy. feeling clairsentience is a yes. big one for, for you guys watching clairsentience. Is, that's my second one is clairsentience. Yeah. And where that's you clear clearly yeah. feel it. Mm -hmm. like, and you might get tingles, your stomach might hurt, that kind of thing. There's also, um, some people don't recognize this one, but clear empathy. And that is more the like emotional feelings, right? Mm -hmm. And that gets pushed into sentience a lot. Um, but I teach both of them now because some people are more in tune to the feelings than they are to the physical things in their body. And some oh, people man. aren't tuned into the feelings at all, but their body, like they'll know when someone's knee is hurting because their knee will start hurting. Yeah. But when any of those things happen, so the first step to me is do what you can to stop in that moment and go, what just happened? How did I feel it? What did I experience? Is there a chill coming on? Did the temperature change? Some of those people, some of you are going to go, no, none of that happened. And that's okay. But if every time you know that a message came through you in whatever way you stop, you'll start usually feeling some sort of energetic change. Yeah. And then it's easier to know. The other thing I will say is we get these messages and then we think that that's the end and that we can't do like, okay, well, they gave me the message, but I don't know what to do about it. Like right. half of my Instagram videos are that joke. So, but we don't ask for more. Yeah. We don't treat these, these entities, these beings as our friends, as our family. And they are. So ask, 
ask for more clarification. Ask, oh, say, is this me or is this you? And then that first answer, go with it. Okay, it's you, great. Can you tell me more? Um, ear ringing, that's a big one, right? You might have an illness that you're, you might have something that going on that causes your ear to ring, but often our guides will use that to snap us into attention. And so when that happens, it's about stopping and asking. Um, somebody just on the Instagram reel that I have that's taking off about ear ringing, they just um, posted that when their ear rings, they go and pull an Oracle card or a tarot card. And I was like, that is brilliant. Yeah. Um, because what we need to do is allow them to communicate with us. It's like a little like, angelic doorbell. Ding absolutely. Dong. Absolutely. Hello. Pay attention. <laughs> and, and the same thing for some of you, you're feeling that in your body. For some of you, it's a song that comes on the radio, but we tend to get these messages, especially at the beginning. And we just sit and we're like, okay, well, I don't know what that means. Okay. Ask, ask, go, what, what is this? And, and that was one of the best pieces of advice I got in classes when I first started. And I would highly recommend taking classes um, you can find a million different videos and that's a great way to take classes if that's what you want to do, but finding someone who you trust and working with them, finding a coach, like a lot of times my coaching clients will go from let's improve your life to, okay, let's hone in on your psychic gifts and figure out how to do this. Um, because everybody is different in that. And sometimes it is nice to have someone to walk along with you. I don't believe it should be somebody who is like, I'm not a big fan of gurus, I'm not a big fan of like this oversight and, and power to you if that's what you want. I want someone to walk with me. I want somebody to hold my hand as we're going down the path together. Yeah. Um, and we can all learn from one another. And I think that's so beautiful. And I have been blessed with so many amazing mentors along the way and continue to be. And sometimes there are people who haven't been doing this as long as I have because they have something that they just got and we learn from everyone. But Figuring out what is going on, how you are getting those messages, that's a huge part. And like when I teach my psychic development class, there's quizzes out there you can take to try to figure out which gifts are maybe your strongest. Um, and that's also a good part is to go, okay, I definitely am seeing visions in my eye, mind's eye. Okay, so clairvoyance is something I want to work on first. And then usually when you start working on that, the other ones start popping in, which is really beautiful. Interesting. Yeah, no, I love that so much. And no, that was a lot of good information because I know too that I would, I would get a download and get stuck sometimes. And then when I got that card, the, the, you know, for the deck of cards, that whole, all that information by that time, years ago, a few years ago, maybe four years by now, I, I knew um, cause I'd just been in this work for so long. Like yeah. I have to do this because it's going out there into it. I'm not the only one receiving that it's going yeah. out to anybody who's in that, <laughs> you know, in that it's in the ethers, so to speak. Totally. So I well, need to take action right away and bring it into fruition. It, you know, law of attraction requires action. A lot of people think it's just sitting around, um, <laughs> on a meditation cushion and, and wishful thinking, positive thinking. And right. no, every single thing that you see in this world, is, somebody took action to create it. They didn't just positive think it here. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. part of it. Part, part of it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with thinking positive. Yeah. And, you know, I think also with the, the psychic development side of things, uh, it is a matter of Finally, when you realize what's going on, practicing with others is such a huge step because it's, I, it is harder for me to read for myself than for anyone else, right? Yes. Like I can sit Always and read for hundreds of people, thousands of people as I have and have no issues. And then when I'm trying to clarify a message, I'm like, I don't know. I'm so, I don't know. Because my brain and my ego get in the way. Yes. So practicing with others, finding practice circles, awkwardly Zen, the community I run has two a month. I teach one, um, Kendara Laurel, who's been doing this for 50 years, teaches one. Um, finding things like that, where you can practice, where you can start doing that also helps you find your faith. And that's really it, right? We just have to find that faith, yes. um, which will allow those gifts to grow. Just like law of attraction is what's the next step and what steps am I going to take um, that are being handed to me because I'm asking for them. It's the same with psychic development. Like the things are coming to you. They're, they're right there for you to take. You just got to keep picking that low hanging fruit until it gets comfortable. Right. Yeah. And like you were talking about earlier with the guru, like what I consider myself a guide more, but you, it's not really as 
um, much of a business title as much, you know, I'm a guide. Yeah. We're really just guiding our clients. They're doing the work, you know, yeah. you, but it is, it's like the hardest thing for people to see is themselves and, and f for all of us. And so yeah. I'm like you, like sometimes I'm great with other people. And then sometimes with myself, my ego gets in the way, like you said, and a lot of it's just getting out of our own way, right? That's how we become our own master at things. You guys is getting out of our own way. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, but, oh my goodness, it's, it's a lifelong journey. Uh, so let's talk, since we're talking about ego, let's talk a little bit about the imposter syndrome and, and okay. working, working with that ego, which is of course a good thing. We're, we're not supposed to, I'm, I'm not about dismantling the ego. The ego is there for a reason. Yeah, it's our friend. It's there to keep us safe. But how would you make it your friend? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, I, I am on the same wavelength. I don't, the people who are like, you got to kill your ego. I'm like, no, uh, my ego is my friend and my ego my ego is my amigo. That. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, for me, what I tend to do is one recognizing when it is ego, right? So when that ego pops up and, or uh, that negative self-talk is usually how mine shows up. I've got a great mean girl in my head. She is, mm, mm -hmm. she's really good at it. But when she does that, when she pops up to me, it's, being in gratitude for it trying to keep me safe and then saying, but I am okay. Yeah. And by doing that, I'm taking the, the power, if you will, I'm taking the control back from my ego because my ego is trying to talk me out of something, but I've already gone through it, right? I've already decided this is a good step for me and this is what I'm going to do. And I'm working with my guides and my team and, and all of those things. So if I know that I'm safe saying that to my ego, I'm safe, usually she calms right down, right? She goes and moves over to the side or I'll be like, go color a picture. Um, Maybe acknowledging her and, and saying, thank you. Yes, yes. Do, do you and name your ego? Because- I don't, I don't. I know a lot of people do. Do you name yours? Yeah. What's her name? Victoria, because it sounded like an evil name a little bit. So Victoria. <laughs> She's the mean girl, right? My alter um, ego. Yeah. yeah. She's and, the mean girl. And I, I appreciate I don't even know where that came from. I'm sure someone taught me it or I found it on a video or something because everything is so like going through, but whoever taught me that gratitude for my ego really improved my life because I used to get mad, right? I used to be like, knock it off. Stop being mean to me. Like I'd have, I'd turn almost the same energy back on it. And now when it comes and, and I'm then like, it's like, mm. yeah, power struggle. Yeah. And there's no need for that. So now when it comes and I'm like, okay, you're trying, it's the same thing as the people in my life who love me, even though they have a different belief system, right? Yeah. Thank you for loving me so much. Now, anytime love is going through a layer of fear, it can get a little ugly, right? And so that ego love going through that fear, which is really what it's holding on to, it's going to get a little, little ugly. It's going to be a little bit of skull and crossbones. But if I can say, oh my gosh, thank you. You love me. And how great is that? I'm good. Um, the ego, it takes all the power away. It's like instantly the ego's like, all right, well, I'll be over here. I'll come back again and see you tomorrow. Like, and that has helped me immensely. Um, but then the other thing is, is allowing, if that ego keeps popping up, is that something I need to be aware of? Is that something I need to stop and go, okay, hold on. What do I need to know about this? Or why is it keep keeping popping up? What is that fear? And what can I do with that fear? What can I embrace about that fear? What can I let go of, of that fear? Or is that fear justified? And I'm about to do something real stupid. And sometimes it is. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of like spending some time with that ego of like, tell me what's scary for you. Tell me why you're thinking this. Tell me why you're telling me I'm stupid. Like, what is that? Um, and sometimes I'm great at that. And sometimes I'm not, sometimes I'm like, go sit in the corner. That's, like, important. Mom, That's important for people to understand is you know, we're all up and down through, you know, like it's, I, I mean, not, not all day, every day, you know, right. cause for the most part, I have learned to be on an even keel and I do catch myself, but, but it's sometimes, I don't, does this happen to you? Sometimes I just want to be in a bad mood for some reason, just, totally. to, just to experience the contrast to come back out of it. I think Abraham even says like, there's not really a better feeling than have been low and then go back up high. Like, but yeah, if we're always do high, we don't get that feeling of getting back into the vortex. Totally. Well, and also, like, could you imagine how unrelatable we would be if we never had bad moods? Like, could you imagine going to a coach and then being like, I'm just happy all the time? You'd be like, 
forget you. Um, that is so, so true. That is yeah, so true. To me, I'm, I don't want to not be human. <laughs> I I really do. And sometimes it's, it's funny because Valerie, you talked about Valerie and she was your guest last week and, yeah. um, and Travis, who was your guest a while ago. We Hi Travis. A, Thanks ongoing... for introducing me to know, Ari so and, and Valerie too. Uh, but we have this ongoing talk and sometimes we get a little catty, right? We get a little bit like about it. And it's funny because we'll catch ourselves, but at the same time, there, we're all three very dramatic, very flamboyant humans. Mm -hmm. And if you think you're going to put three of us in a room and not have some of the like, woo, come out. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's not what Source was planning here when he put the three of us together. <laughs> right, 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 right. No, I'm the same way. I can only imagine. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I, I do. I do well with um, like, so for instance, if someone has the exact same personality as me or, or, or more, I like, I start to feel like, I could be, I'll back down a little bit. Like I'll be more of the wallflower and I don't right. like that feeling too much. I'm like, but I like to be the one who's more outspoken and not catty, but you know, you know, it just kind of over certain people can overshadow us, I guess, you know? Yeah. You know, it's interesting. I feel like that's one of the things that is transitioning in my life because, uh, I am larger than life. Right. And, and my whole life it's been, Oh, Aries, a force Aries too loud. Shush. You know, Oh my gosh, you're so much. And it's like, yeah, I'm a lot like this wouldn't happen. Embracing a little, it. Right. Mm -hmm. And being aware that that also means that sometimes I have to give up things to my other people. Like we awkwardly Zen's run by complete volunteers and there's like 40 of them. And I had to let go of the reins of everything so that the calmer and gentler people could run some of our events because I am too much for some people. Yeah. And I used to get offended by that, but no, I am too much for some people and that's okay. Now you embrace it. <laughs> and what I love about my community is that if I am too much for you, let me find you someone who fits your energy. Cause I love making those connections. I love finding people. If, if someone's like, well, I'm looking for a coach and I can see them hesitant and I'm like, okay, maybe not me. Maybe I'm not your coach, but here's the list of coaches I have and who are involved with this. And, and let's talk for a minute to get your energy because I can fit you with the energetic match for you. And that's right. just it. Like, I think we spend so much time thinking we should get along with everyone. And of course not. Can you imagine how awful that would be? <laughs> so I love it when I find someone who's like, I think you're great, but, and I'm like, oh, 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 let me put you with Jillian then who's much more mellow, right? Yeah. Or if somebody is a little bit more edgy, I'm going to throw them to Val um, because Valerie's got that like ability to be edgy and not take offense. She's got that Sagittarius wrapped around her. So I don't know. I just think it's so fun to be able to, to realize that and, and not see it as a flaw, but to see yeah, no, it as a joy. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 is great. That's all about self awareness too, right? And yeah. um, you know, sometimes a client seems great in the discovery call. Like we seem like a vibrational match, but I'm always getting them initially when they're motivated, you know. And and I think yeah. a lot of people don't realize like you're motivated now, but motivation's not always there. We can't rely on motivation. We got to rely on discipline and commitment, you know, to really yeah. make changes because I'm not motivated every day. Are you, you know, you just do things anyway, <laughs> you right. do what you got to do it. Uh, you know, I always use that Olympic athletes aren't motivated all the time, but they know yeah. what they got to do to reach their goals. So we got to, you know, of course, motivation comes and goes and you just got to be okay with that. Well, and if you're a type I'm A, not, I was going to yeah. say, if you're type A and like that, I'm proud of you for being able to delegate out to, you know, to realize I'm not a good fit. Oh, and I yeah. think I used to do that in the beginning of my coaching career is I would just take anyone and, and, oh. and then you realize, <laughs> oh no, that is not what you want because then you don't look forward to those sessions because yeah. you realize this is not an energetic match and you're not able to be authentic. And if everybody likes us, I don't think we're being authentic because not everybody should like you. Okay. Absolutely. And also even with like my psychic readings, like the first time I had to tell somebody I wasn't going to read for them because I, I wasn't going to put myself through that because their aggression and their like, they wanted me to tell them what they wanted to hear. I can't do that. I um, integrity is everything in this right. business. And I, if something is coming to me and it's not what you want to hear, 
I'm sorry, but I, you sat in front of me and asked me to tap into your guides, your angels, your team to give you a message. And I'm going to give you that message. Um, and only, only maybe two or three times have I had to, but I have absolutely had to say, I'm sorry, this isn't working. And here's your money back. Um, yeah. because it's just not, it's not going to be a good fit for us. And usually it's within the first five minutes, which is lovely. Um, cause don't waste my time, but it yeah, is we gotta protect our energy. Absolutely. We, we are humans as well. Right. And even though we are doing the universe's work in these situations, it is, it is this beautiful opportunity for us to also value ourselves above all else. And I think that that is so important. I love that. So let's talk about finding your spiritual community. Yes. It's my favorite topic. Uh, so for me, one of the things that I'm trying to remember who it was, one of the big names, um, you said Dyer and it wasn't Dyer. It was, I can't remember. Anyway, somebody, one of the big names, I'm not taking credit for this. Um, I was listening to a video while I was driving one day and they were talking about finding a new relationship and they put in the middle of this piece of paper, my new relationship. And then they did, I call this a mind map. And I think that's what they called it too. Mm -hmm. And then they did all of these lines out and they wrote all the things they wanted in their new relationship. Uh, and I highly recommend doing that for anyone who's looking for a community. Okay. My community, my people, my tribe, my, whatever you want to call it, put it in the middle and then write all the things you want around it. Right now, this is where it's a little different than like a uh, um, vision board or something like that, then you fold it up, you put it somewhere where you're barely going to glance at it and you just trust the universe is going to bring that to you. Mm -hmm. Now you still have to watch for those, those stepping stones, right? Like we were talking about with the law of attraction, you still have to watch for those opportunities, um, of joining this community or going out there, or if you don't want to leave the house, okay, find an online community like awkwardly Zen, uh, or like some other, there's lots of places that you can do this now. Uh, but what I found was I did this and I said, my new friends, and it wasn't that my old friends weren't great, but I wanted people who matched my energy more often. I wanted people who wanted to go on vacation. I wanted people who wanted to explore spirituality. I wanted people who could pay for their own stuff. Like I had all of these things that I wanted and when this started happening with Awkwardly Zen, all of a sudden, the spiritual community turned into my best friends in the world, right? Valerie and I, Travis and I, none of us knew each other before Awkwardly Zen. And even like Valerie and I were introduced by a woman who is no longer in either of our lives. Um, she, she came in, she gave us the gift of each other, and then she said goodbye. And she is off doing her own thing. And it's so beautiful to be able to find that. And I think with, with finding your community, it's about finding an energetic fit that challenges you just enough, right? That's going to push you out of your comfort zone. That's going to make you like have to shed your skin a little bit, but also one that doesn't make you feel less than, yeah. um, because you're not like, and I say that all the time when I can watch when someone puts me up on a pedestal, right? Someone new comes into awkwardly Zen and they're like, airy. And I'm like, oh gosh, no, let's take me off of there. Cause it hurts when I fall off of those. Right, um, right. And it does. And I know that because I put people up on pedestals and it hurt when they fell off. Yeah. So there are no pedestals. We are all equal. All of us, right? Louise Hay could be, if she was no longer, if she was with us, could be sitting in the room with us and she would be the same as us energetically. She has a ton more knowledge than I do. And that's amazing, but I have different knowledge, mm -hmm. right? And, and so when you start thinking in that way and you start realizing that you are a part of the one, you are equal, you are worthy of all of these people's attention, then there's this beautiful thing that can happen where you start finding situations where you truly get to believe that. And I will say with Awkwardly Zen, which is we created it as a safe space to explore spirituality, right? The number one rule is there is no right or wrong um, as long as you're not being hurtful. And uh, we ask people to hold space for someone to have a different point of view. And once we watch people click into that, mm, God, it's so beautiful um, because they start sharing. And when we do this in Awkwardly Zen, we shake our hands when we agree with someone. So when I feel someone being nervous and I'm moderating a room and they'll go, well, I had this weird thing happen. And then they'll talk about channeling or talk about meditation or that. And I say, uh, how many people in this room have experienced something like that? And the whole room does this. 
you watch that person go, right. Uh, I can, I can be myself and that like find the place where you can be yourself. There are so many options out there. So please, please, please. If it's not awkwardly Zen, find another one, but come hang out with us in awkwardly Zen and see, cause I think we're a pretty good fit for a lot of people. And I love that. I love that um, idea of, cause writing things down is magical. And I also know so many stories of people writing things down, putting it away in a drawer. And then like later on, like sometimes years later, like everything happened, like everything totally. on their list. Cause yeah. our subconscious minds are still working on these things, you know, even though we're not consciously thinking of them, yeah. writing it down yeah. is, is definitely so, so helpful. And I, like I said, magical, I think. I agree. Well, um, how, what is the best way I'm going to, I'm going to have all your links, everything Good. you want me to have, but what's the best way for people to contact you? Or do you want them to follow you on Instagram? What's your preference? I absolutely want them to follow me on Instagram. Um, I have just finally all these years later, embraced the Instagram, um, adventure. And I started making very silly videos along with card pulls daily. So please follow me on Instagram at Ari Honeyford, and that'll be in there. Um, the way to book with me is to go to my snip feed. Um, so I believe that's snipfeed.co slash Ari Honeyford, but again, the link will be there. Um, you can also go to awkwardlyzen.com and find all of our partners that are there, including Travis and Valerie, who we've talked about today and a million others. Uh, that's a little exaggerated. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not there quite yet, uh, but you can find that there. And that also will give you all the information about uh, how to find us on Meetup. We're at 16 locations all over the world, but almost everything we do is online. We do 30 free events every single month. Um, so it's a beautiful place to go and kind of get your feet underneath you and then figure out where you want to go from there and, and find some really fun people who are going to treat you with respect and kindness and understand some of what you're going through, which is one of my favorite things. Find your tribe, you guys. And if you want to be a psychic, Aerie teaches psychic development I classes. So do. that's where the title of this came from. So definitely reach out to her, contact her if that's something that interests you. If you want to do some psychic development work, she's going to be an excellent guide for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I uh, there's going to be an online class coming soon. I don't have it up right now, but I do personal one-on-one -on -one coaching. So they can find that there. Um, and then also, if you follow me on Instagram, any of the classes I teach, I teach tarot, I teach all sorts of things. So those will pop up on Instagram as well. Well, perfect. It was great talking to you. I love your energy. You're definitely, you. you are a force, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> as I are you. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely have a lot of energy too. And I, yeah, I, I stopped I also, like you're saying, I stopped worrying about that and making ourselves too small for people. They, they're just aren't our people and that's okay. We, we gotta yeah. be, okay. we can't be everybody. Yeah, or, be. <laughs> or they just won't like everything I do and that's okay. It's okay. Exactly. <laughs> Well, on that note, it was wonderful talking to you and to our audience. Make sure you look up Aerie on Instagram and it was, I guess we will see everybody next week on the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for having me.